Let's now talk about one of the most important and widely used parameter objects, and that is the number slider. If you go under params input, you can find this number slider. Let's click, drag, and drop. This is uh, one way of accessing it. Later, I'm going to show you a few other ways. I'm also going to go to vector point, construct point, and use this component as well. So first, I want you to pay attention to the slider name. So now it says that it's just a slider, a number slider. If I connect it to the input parameter of this component, it would then say that it's an X coordinate. This is very useful and it helps us to organize our definition so that it's easier to read and to understand our definitions. If I connect it uh, to other inputs as well, you can see that the first coordinate just stays. So it says it's an X coordinate. Obviously, now it's all three of those. If I double click on this uh, name part of the input slider parameter, slider options settings box appear. And here I can choose to change the slider name. Let's type in coordinates. I can also here change some other settings, but let's go step by step. Let's click OK. And here you go. You see that the name has changed. I will go grab another construct point component. And I will also select the number slider parameter, hold Alt, and make a cut. So now, as you see, the name of the slider stays the same. It says coordinates. And if I connect to other input parameter, it doesn't, it doesn't change accordingly. So you can double click and access these uh, properties. But then also you can right click and have this menu menu pop up with some settings as well. So maybe for the name change, this is faster, right clicking is faster. So if I delete my custom naming, the default settings apply. Let's double click again on the number slider name part so that we have our settings box. We can also here change the grip style. We can change it to be just shape. And you have to click OK to see. So we don't we wouldn't have here a certain number. We wouldn't see it. There might be cases when it's not that important. Let's double click again. Let's change it now to shape. Shape and text was the default one. Let's change it now to box and text. So this looks quite convenient. Since um, in the default settings, if I want to change the slider value, I need to hover exactly over that small bubble in order to be able to change the value. So anywhere else, if I hover, it, it doesn't work. So I need to be very precise. So with this one, it's easier since you can hover over the numerical value itself. Let's leave it like this. Let's go again, double click. So I can also change the type of the numeric value or here it says slider accuracy. Um, so you can change it. Now it's a floating number parameter. And here are the decimal values of that floating number parameter. 
So of course, if I have zero, then I wouldn't have any decimals, any digits after the, the dot. I can have integers, I can have even or odd numbers. So if I have even numbers, for now, uh, I also need to change my values since the domain is just a zero. It's one, it's just one value. Let's double click on the maximum value and set 20. And then on the minimum, and I will say minus 20. So my range is 40. And my snap should be on even numbers only. Let's check how that works. Let's click OK. As I scroll, my number slider snaps only to the even numbers within the range of minus 20 up to 20. Sometimes, especially if you have a larger range or you need more accuracy, like here, if you scale number slider, then your, your scrolling can be more accurate since the size of the slider, its length, it's longer. What else can we do? Of course, we can choose odd numbers to snap. And here we can also set the value to, so if I say six and click OK, and it automatically says six. I can also change this value not by scrolling, but just by double clicking on the value and typing the new one. So similar to the settings that I just showed you, double clicking on the slider name, we can also access a lot of them by right clicking on the name. We can choose here to disable or enable we can also change slider type. Let's go back to integers. We can change the range, the values. We can add some expressions. And we're going to talk about animation in future videos. The last thing I want to show regarding number slider is the shortcuts, the ways to access it. If I double click on canvas, I can just type any number, any numeric value, and Grasshopper will try to read it as, as a number slider. And depending on what you type in, so let's say I double click and I type in 10 and click enter. So Grasshopper automatically tries to decide what sort of range and what sort of type of numbers, the accuracy, is it integer numbers? And if I type in, let's say, 12.2323, then it's, of course, a floating parameter. The range is from 0 to 100. Using these shortcuts, I can also create a completely custom number slider with a custom minimum and maximum values as well as the current value set in between the minimum and the maximum ones. And then I click enter. So I already set the, the current value of the slider. I set the minimum value and the maximum value and it's completely custom. So this is probably the fastest way to create a number slider. I think we have covered it all for this tutorial, and I see you in the next one.